I usually draw the tattoo where, in terms of the anatomy, is coming closer towards the viewer. So, for instance, the shoulder blades right here, if we were actually looking at the model, would dimensionally be in front of us closer. Similar to like a sphere rolling away from the viewer. You know, as like the sphere turns, the edges soften and diminishes in detail. The same thing is true when you have a subject who's, you know, has tattoos and the details are coming out at the viewer and then also going in. I figure once I establish this back piece and get it to a certain level of detail, I can dissolve everything else. And I kind of want some of my undertone to show through to make sure that kind of reminds the viewer that this is an open painting. Um, making sure that things aren't very closed in in this area. Because again, I want this plane to pop out further. Sap green, Scarlet Lake with uh, foundation umber. A little bit of blue, a little bit of rose gray there. And now I'm using my uh, acidic free Gamblin gel medium and that helps with some transparency. Monochrome warm tint. Like this is for areas of the snake that are crossing into the sunlight. The light is hitting her on this side and it's skewing all the tattoos. Like it's making it really challenging. So I'll keep the image at thumbnail size for as long as humanly possible. I'll look at this image from this perspective and then sometimes either walk away or start to step back. Kind of go back and forth and look at my sketch here. I'll also shrink it to about the same size just to cool off some of the, the other colors I had in here. But you can kind of tell where this lighting from the sun that's hitting your shoulder blades exists here and the details of the tattoos diminish on this side and I glazed over mine. So I just primarily looked at shape and I I can go as crazy as possible zooming in and zooming back out. I try to picture it in a gallery if it was across the wall or down the hall what are going to be the colors and in shapes that pop out and make me want to go over and look at it so this scale or print size or whatever you want to call it is usually how I gauge my images. You can kind of see how chunky my paint gets here and that's a a dimensional thing that I tend to think about because on her over here this part of her shoulder blade juts out towards the viewer so I kinda identify with that principle by chucking globs of paint. Kinda interesting looking at this on its own because it could be its own image you know if I keep reducing it I think by adding detail you shouldn't exhaust the viewers patience a lot of the times like this all looks kinda cartoonish but then when you look at the image from what I would call like at sight, like if you're at a gallery, all the details mend together. Like it's a real person, you know, that's six or seven feet away. You're not going to see all the lines of their tattoos. It's going to be skewed based on your perspective and the lighting. So um, that's why I enjoy painting people with tattoos because it's a, it's a dimensional challenge based on color.